Okay, everybody, so I'm back here with another video of me working on my game and stuff. Um, so I just finished more controls and more improvement. Last video I left off, I showed that I've got an improved map. I can pan, I can select, I can move my mouse around, and it'll show this little arrow or little little box and stuff. Um, I just implemented left and right click behavior. As you saw with my last video, I implemented where if I left click, it'll move the player around. I've now changed it around as I, I said I was going to do, which is left click to select, right click to move. So if I left click and I right click, you don't see nothing's going to happen. But if I left click on this little entity here, I can now move him around. As soon as I left click again, I now deselect him. If I had more than one entity, I can move him around, which we'll do that real quick. We'll add some more entities here. Um, so right now I'm just initializing entities in the main class here, but uh, in the actual thing, they'll be set up in the level data. See how right here we've got multiple entities. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to generate them so they're all in the same spot. Now the game's not supposed to allow this to work, but I uh, don't really care to mess with it too much. So we're going to do this real quick. This also gets rid of my selected entity thing. So we're going to make an entity Bob, and then we're going to make uh, Jim. Uh, we'll make one called Paul, and then we'll make another one called Tim. I thought for a second I was going to make one called Trump, be like, hey, I've got the wall builder. But <laughs> I realized that'll turn into a political nightmare after a while. Um, but we're going to build, so we got four, four entities. I hit run again. Okay, apparently I've got two instances of this running, too, recording software, and they both link to the same piece of software. Actually, this one isn't doing anything. This one is. Cool. I don't know why I have two OBSs running. But, we get, okay, we got all four entities. So they're all stacked on top of each other. Um, so I'm going to select whatever one was the first on the list is what it's going to select. So if I go like that, like that, like that, and like that, we actually can move all the entities around. Now, when you actually end up playing this game, when I get it done, um, more than likely you're only going to control one entity because you're only going to have one character you're going to play as. But over time as you play the game, you might get companions and you might get uh, pets and stuff and you'll be able to control them around so you'll be able to click and tell them where to go. And as I said, i got to do pathfinding on this still, so i got to go like, hey, you can only move so many tiles and you got a path. Um, where it'll say like, hey, you can't move through people, although actually I'll let it move through people. As long as it's not an enemy opponent, I'll let you move through it uh, to kind of be like civilization, how it behaves. Um, so yeah, this works actually pretty well. And consider the fact this is only, I want to say, day three of development. I actually haven't been keeping track. Uh, but this is turning out pretty well, um, all things considered. Also, if you notice, uh, this has behavior. So if I left-click and I go to right-click to move over here, it won't let me. But it'll let me move next to him. It won't let me move on the same tile. It actually does check. And if I show the code here, code is really simplistic. Um, it does the left click, right click, check as I showed earlier. We keep track of if when we release the key, so we do actions on release rather than on click. So that way, if I selected a guy and then I held right click, it won't do anything until I hold release. Um, this is really useful because if you actually pay attention to how people play games, and if they realize they're going to make a mistake, they won't release right click at, until they want to do something. They'll be like, oh, I didn't want to move there. Um, they'll go like, I don't want to move there, and they'll drag, and they'll be like, here's why I wanted to move. Because uh, they know that that's a feature that games have. Not all games have that. I've actually played games where as soon as you right-click, you move. And it will do action on-click rather than on-release. And it changes your gameplay behavior completely and it throws you off. But yeah, here's the code. Um, we keep track of when we click. As soon as we click, we call do left-click, do right-click. I separated these out in the method because what I'm going to do is extend uh, game display here to build the editor. The editor will be built with the same exact technology as the game itself. But then there'll be a separate control set for the editor, and there'll be a separate control set for the uh, game itself. They won't be too different. Um, there will be some different graphics and stuff, but this will allow me to easily build up the editor. The original plan was I was going to actually build a uh, JavaFX application for the editor, and you'd be editing table data to build your mouse. But I was like, ah, that, that's not going to look nice, and it's not going to play nice. And in reality, we'd be cheating ourselves around, and we'd have to build up a whole new system just to do an editor. With this way, I can just use the graphic display. And what, what it would work out as is that you would have a tile that would show up in the corner here, and you would hit page up, page down to switch your tile. Uh, eventually, I'll, I'll migrate to a drop-down list, but that won't happen right away because I'm in OpenGL. And just like Minecraft, I have to build all of my GUIs from scratch. There is no helper classes unless I want to go download something like Java Game Library, which I don't want to do because it has so much stuff in it that I don't know what most of it is and that would just make my learning process of building a game even longer than it needs to be. With this at least I know how to build GUIs in Minecraft and they're not too 
difficult. Um, what you do is you do the same thing I'm doing with this little reticle here. You figure out where your mouse is on the screen. You go, okay, if my over a GUI component, then if I left click, I activate the GUI component. If I'm not over that GUI component, then I do something else. It's really simplistic, but uh, that's the end of this video here. I'll get some more videos out here later. Uh, I do plan to work on GUIs maybe somewhere towards the end of the week if I do not have to do more mod development stuff, which is more likely going to happen because uh, uh, me and my team have to do work on MFFS sometime this month and get it working. And then by the end of the month, I want to be updated to Minecraft 1.8, which I don't see happening because it's literally two weeks away. More likely it's going to be April when I get that done, which is the reason why I put a, a poll out on Twitter and asked people, and most people didn't care when I got done. Literally it went as the highest uh, uh, poll answer was, doesn't matter when you get done. Then after that it was finished in April. So I'm going to shoot for April, but in reality it might be anything. But uh, end of video, so bye.